This video tutorial is divided into two segments. In the first part of the video, I'll review how GPA is calculated. And then we'll examine the impact of variable credit courses and AP courses have on GPA. The second part of the video will look at using an Excel spreadsheet to calculate GPA. Let's get started. GPA calculation is done on a four-point scale. Each letter grade represents a numerical value. Looking at the chart on the screen, we see the letter grade A is 4.0, A minus 3.7, B plus 3.3, and so on. This chart will be useful for us as we calculate GPA. Grade point average is derived from taking the total grade points divided by the number of credits attempted. Let's look at an example. Say that a student took the following courses and earned these grades. First, we convert the letter grades to their numerical values. Let's assume that all of these courses are five credits each. We then multiply the numerical value of each letter grade by five and sum the total grade points. We now have 55 as our total grade points. We then divide 55 by the total number of credits attempted. In this case, there are four classes, five credits each, so we would divide by 20. Our GPA for these four courses is 2.75. Let's look at what happens to our GPA if a couple of these classes were variable credit courses. We'll say that English and math are only one credit courses. This would change the total grade points as well as the number of credits attempted. The calculation is the same. We now have a new total grade points of 27 and a new number of credits attempted, which is 12. Our GPA with variable credit courses is 2.25. An advanced placement course gains an extra grade point only if the student earns C or better. Let's take a look at our chart. Earning an A in an AP course would give the student five grade points. Earning a B, four. And earning a C would be a three. Note that any grade below a C would not yield an extra point. Let's look at our example again. Say that in our example, the science course was an AP science. Instead of rating the C as a 2, this course will earn an extra grade point, making it 3 grade points. Again, the calculation is the same. We now have a new total grade points of 32. The total number of credits attempted is the same, it's 12. Our new weighted GPA is 2.67. This concludes the GPA calculation for variable credits and weighted GPA. There are several advantages in using a spreadsheet to calculate GPA. One of the advantages is that the computation of GPA is done instantly and automatically. Another advantage is that all of the students' high school academic data is presented in one place. In this next section, I will be going over an Excel spreadsheet I developed to calculate high school GPA. This spreadsheet incorporates formulas to automatically calculate GPA and is pre-populated with four years of high school course titles. For each year of high school, there are two semesters, fall and spring. Let's take a look at the ninth grade fall semester. The first column is where we enter the course titles. This can be changed to reflect what the student actually took this semester. In our example, our student took Spanish 1 this semester. So I'll change that. Our student also took advisory, so I'll input that as well. We then record the grades that our student earned in these courses for this semester under the next column. Note that you can use a pull down menu or enter the value in uppercase. Let's fill in the grades that our student earned for this semester. The next column is where we record the credits attempted for each course. Again, you can use the pull down menu or enter the credits manually. All of these courses, or a majority of them, are actually five credits. So let's put that down. 
our advisory course is rated as only half a credit. So let's manually enter that. The grade point column is where some of the calculation takes place. You do not need to do anything under this column as there are formulas embedded in each cell for the calculations to be done automatically. The last column under the fall semester is where we note whether or not a particular course meets A to G. You may want to consult with UC Doorways if you're unsure. The only adjustment we need to make here is that our Spanish course does meet A to G and our advisory course does not. Row 13 below shows the student's GPA for the semester. The spring semester of the ninth grade on the spreadsheet is similar to the fall semester. I'll make a couple adjustments to the title to reflect what our example student took and enter the grades for the number of credits for the semester. In addition to the semester GPA below, we also have a new field for cumulative GPA. This cumulative GPA will calculate fall and spring semesters. I've entered the grades and credits for the spring semester. I see that I made a mistake in the credits attempted for the advisory course where I meant to enter half a credit and not five. This is a good reminder for us to enter the data correctly. Also, it's important that when we remove a class that we also remove the credits for that course. Our example student earned 3.34 for this semester and has a cumulative GPA of 3.26. Documenting 10th grade coursework is similar to the 9th grade, with the exception of an additional column to note advanced placement and UC approved honors courses. Because UCs and CSUs will give an extra point for APs and approved honors courses, it's important that you set this correctly. Let's look at an example. Say that a student took regular chemistry and earned the letter grade A. This is a five credit course and the student earned 4.0 for the semester and the A to G GPA is 4.0. If we say that this chemistry course is actually an AP chemistry course and we flag it as an AP course on the column here, You'll note that there is an additional bump to the A to G GPA here. A to G GPA calculation strictly follows the policy of where students enroll in AP courses must earn C or better to receive that gain. This field also calculates the courses that are identified as A to G under this column. Any courses that are not A to G are not included in this calculation. Let's complete the other grades on this spreadsheet so that we have a complete picture for this semester. First, we'll change the title of this world language course. Then, we'll say that the student earned all A's and all of these courses are five credits each. We'll check the A to G column and note that the Spanish course is an A to G course and we'll check the AP honors, but we only have one course, that's AP. Our GPA this semester with straight A's is 4.0. Our cumulative GPA that includes all the courses in the ninth grade, as well as the current semester, is 3.51. And our A to G weighted GPA is 4.20. The rest of this spreadsheet is set up exactly the same as the 10th grade fall semester. You can find this spreadsheet on the Counselor SharePoint, and I welcome your feedback. This is Nelson Paul on special assignment with the Student Data Redesign Project at the Information Technology Department.